Hello and welcome to round 5 of 6 for Biscuit Manufacture Showdown. In this episode we'll be looking at some sports cars from the 70s with technology like ABS and traction control on all available, making good engineering important. Without wasting time, I should introduce our benchmark car, the Bissan 380B. The 380B was originally introduced in the 60s where it became a semi-successful sports car that then replaced the GTQ 400. This version is the Mark II that emerged during the 70s. The engineers reworked the suspension, rebuilt the gearbox, lightened the car, replacing wire wheels in the process. There have also been very safety improvements including new brakes. All of these changes made the 3ADB to an icon among enthusiasts. ADA Der Stier. 1972 collaboration between German engineers and an Italian designers introduced ADA's Der Stier. powered by a naturally aspirated 2.5 litre V6 outputting just over 200 brake horsepower. Their marketing were apparently not motivated enough to write more at this time. Is 1975 and catalytic converters are now a must have on all road legal cars, which have not been in favour of ISICs due to their liking of the raw exhaust notes of strict pipe systems. But that wasn't to stop production over at I6 Inc. Conquests is I6 Inc.'s first car built to the new industry standards and its 3.6 litre inline 6 putting out 249 brake horsepower will have no problems getting you where you want to go as fast as you'd like. SJ Sven B5 The SJ Sven B5 is as simple as it gets for being a sports car, with a classy old fashioned look and, a, and with a 250 horsepower straight 5, the manual transmission makes a fun playful little car to, to enjoy, you even get a sunroof for those hot summer days. The, SV, the SJ Sven is the sports car for the man that doesn't want to brag about his brand new sports car. Sven got some small cues on the outside and of course the engine note shows what it's got for.
Sundozer Fear. Developed from borrowed and leftover parts, this vehicle is powered by two twin cylinder engines bolted together. It was a rebellious concept made by a handful of ambitious engineers under the nose of Sundoz executives. Once this concept was presented as an idea to the higher ups, it was immediately rejected on the grounds that it didn't fit the company's image and would be too costly to manufacture. The car would have been dismantled had it not been for the CEO, secretly admiring the vehicle and the efforts of the men that worked on it. It was instead stored in a secret location, unbeknownst to its creators, and would not be seen again for several decades. The rogue Sundo saw the light of modern day thanks to the company's new CEO, and this one-of-a-kind previously unnamed machine was refurbished and christened the Sevier. Now it finally has a chance to show what it's made of against what would have been its contemporaries had it ever seen the production line. Wivenworks Alexandrite. The year was 1974. Wivenworks saw two problems in the world. They weren't in Group 4 Rally and people in general needed a car that were crazier than their stars. The solution was a simple one, produce 300 cars based on an ATVM troll frame, allowing the company to homologate the car into World Rally and serve the needs of the people all in one. This line throughout brought us the Xandrite. It was a bastion of the latest technology at the time, with an all aluminium engine construction, a fiberglass shell with the most modern luxuries such as an 8 track tape deck and a lightweight yet comfortable interior, leading the status of the world's hottest hatch and trending as it, en as it endured as disco, which will surely never pass. <laughs> Ultimately, the performance of the mid engine rear wheel drive rally version was unsurprising and pulled after its very first season, but to this day the Xandrite is still a hotly sought after homologation special. It was also notable for a monster's astounding feature, not falling over during shakedown runs. Also they claim. Wolf Gambella. It's early 1975. To mark the centennial event anniversary of the Wolf Motor Company, we have created this. The Wolf Gambella. A sleek, curvy designed, uh, a sleek and curvy car designed to appeal to the booming European market. The rear-mounted 2.5-litre aluminum i5 engine produces 250 horsepower that propels the rear-wheel drive monocoque chassis. Pop-up headlights, massive whale tail rear wing, and dual tri-exit exhaust pipes accentuate the cool factor of this car. The initial sales of the Gambler weren't as strong as we originally anticipated, however. So we did what we were known for, took them racing. We stripped down the Gambler and entered it into two of the most recognisable forms of motorsport racing today, Australian Touring Car Championship and the World Rally Championship. The respective cars are winning their inaugural seasons and sales skyrocketed. And that, and with that, we have covered all the cars entered. The following companies will be scoring zero for this round: Bolt and ADR. So on to our times. In last is the Wolf Gambella with the time of 1.19.9.10, thanks to an insane amount of understeer. Then we have ADA with a 1.15.7.52. Sando takes the next spot with a 15. 05 with O. Then Riverworks just in front with a 115015. Dirty's taking with Bisson 
or the 114922. Second is captured by i6 Inc with a 114-130 leaving SJ out in front with the 112-139 So here are the points earned and our totals After the cops have seen getting a few new toys, the robbers want in on the action. While Biscuit doesn't officially support the actions, we respect the interesting challenge presented to us. Max engine capacity, 4 litres. Must be able to carry 200 kilograms in gold without passengers. Must seat at least 4 people including driver. Must be road legal, but race parts are allowed. Our testing track will be the Jungle Rock Island Port Shakedown.